John chapter 19 verse 25 Jesus be provides for his mother now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother and his mother's sister Mary the wife of Clopas and Mary Magdalene when Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing by he said to his mother woman behold your son then he said to the disciple behold your mother and from that hour that disciple took her to his own home let me show you the slide uh, the last words of our lord jesus christ on the cross the seven words of jesus on the cross now in total there are seven and if you look at it the first four words that jesus uttered on the cross his thoughts were on others but when we come to the last three words of jesus on the cross these last three words were focused on himself so the first word father forgive them for they do not know what they do this is found in luke chapter 23 verse 34 the second word is truly i say to you today you will be with me in paradise that is in luke 23 verse 43 the third word he said as we have just read captured by uh, john in john 19 26 27 jesus said to his mother woman this is your son then he said to the disciple this is your mother and then um, we will come we will read further later verses 4 onwards so this is the third word that jesus said from the cross and even in his suffering in his agony he still had clarity of thought with love in his heart he was fulfilling the word of god in exodus 20 verse 10 no verse 12 don't need to turn there but we know honor thy parents honor thy parents and jesus honored his mother uh, scholars believe by this time his father had passed on and his mother mary was a widow so let's start by looking at who were the people at the cross even at this hour you have jesus his mother a woman and you have uh, his mother's sister uh, you can find a uh, cross reference and see her name is salome salome okay so another woman then you have mary the wife of clopas a woman and then you have mary magdalene the one from whom jesus delivered her of unclean spirits so that is the fourth woman and there was one more person at the cross of course besides the centurion and the four soldiers one more man and that man was john the disciple whom jesus loved so after all that jesus had done in his three years or, or more ministry at the end at the hour when he was really suffering and hurt here only left four women and one man so my question is what happened to the rest of the the the, the other disciples where were they they fled and also the next question is where are all the men only one john well it happened as it is but still we commend this four plus this john these four ladies and this for their courage even at this hour they could be persecuted they could be uh, uh, be associated i mean guilt by association they, they could also be be persecuted but they were not afraid they had courage and they were there these four ladies and jesus in verse 26 therefore saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved you see there is a relationship an intimacy between john the apostle of love and jesus the one whom jesus loved standing by 
and he said to his mother and in this moment he was talking to his mother as god as uh, uh, as uh, uh, god the son would to his mother and he said and this word woman is, is a term of respect it is not a uh, rudeness but it was of respect woman behold your son and he said to the disciple his disciple of choice and he said behold your mother but do you know do you know jesus had other siblings half brothers and half sisters and you find them even in matthew chapter 13 verse 55 He had others. Uh, in Matthew thirteen fifty five, the people were saying, "Is this?" He went back. He went back to Nazareth, and and the people say, "Is this not the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary and his brothers, James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas, and his sisters? Are they not all with us?" So Jesus had siblings, but. Jesus decided to bypass, to bypass all the siblings, uh, even at this moment, and instead went went to his beloved disciple John. So, as Jesus had said before, his family are those who love him. Those who have come to him have a relationship with him, not 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 those that are by blood. Uh, you know, in the family, so the true family forms around the cross. And he told John, you know, behold your mother. John and and Mary got no relationship, but you are in the family of God. And the true family of God forms around the cross, around the person of Jesus Christ. So that's why the family altar is so important. The the family devotion and, and, and as uh, uh, you know leaders of the family and men of the family you know you 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 in your family at your family altar you should talk to your family about Jesus and talk to Jesus about your family you are the priest of your family so on on a larger scale the the family of God which is the body of Christ and and this family will form around. The cross around the person of Jesus Christ, and this is the place of relationship. And even at this moment, woman, behold your son, and behold your mother. And earlier we read in the we saw from the uh, 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 the picture of the cross, the statements Jesus made, and he, Jesus said, "Forgive them, for they know not what they do." Forgiveness, and the lesson is forgiveness flows. From the cross, forgiveness flows from the cross. So there is forgiveness at the cross. So come, sinner as you are, come as you are, come to the cross where you will find forgiveness. So we read on, and from that hour, that disciple, and what a great honor to to take Jesus' place, uh, to honor, to look after Jesus' mother. Not not the, the the siblings of Jesus, but John. John felt such a great honor to take Jesus' place to look after his mother, Jesus' mother. And from that hour, that disciple took her to his own home. Some scholars said maybe from that hour he took her because uh, it is going to be a slow death. It's going to be painful, and he did not want Mary to 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 witness all this, and so he took her home. Eventually, um, John settled in Ephesus. And I and and scholars believe that uh, Mary went with him. He John brought Mary to Ephesus, even towards the tail end of his ministry. So now we come to the death of Jesus, verse twenty-eight. After this, after what? So John skipped the details. You know, he did not. Mention about the darkness from twelve noon to three p.m., uh, where in that 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 three hours there was darkness. There was an eclipse over the whole play whole earth. It was dark, and it was at that moment when he 
he uh, underwent this separation from God the Father and that was the one thing that he, he really wasn't looking forward to but it had to be done. So he, he suffered the darkness, Jesus suffered the separation and physically he was also uh, in thirst, great thirst. Because when you're on the, on the crucifix, uh, you know, you, to breathe is really difficult. You have to step up uh, just to raise your, your, your diaphragm that you can breathe. Then when you lower yourself, then your diaphragm will cave in. Then it's a bit difficult to breathe. And, and through all this, as you were perspiring and as you were bleeding under the, the sun, thirst, thirst will get the better of you. So, verse 28 after this so after that three hours of darkness and separation knowing that all things were now accomplished so jesus wasn't suffering in ignorance he did not know what he was going through he knew he wasn't a victim of circumstances he was in charge of the circumstances he knew what he was going through so after this jesus knowing that all things were now accomplished that the scripture might be fulfilled said i thirst knowing that all the scriptures that the scriptures might be fulfilled and we will not count today but uh, by jesus death on the cross about 20 over some said about 28 28 prophecies were fulfilled and you can read all this in Genesis chapter 22, Psalm 22, Isaiah 53, uh, a lot of all, a lot of prophecies directed or, or, or uh, which mention of the which point to, to the crucifixion and Jesus' death on the cross. You can find all this fulfilled even as Jesus hung on the cross and subsequently died. And he said, I thirst. I thirst, which I showed you uh, in the slide earlier. So, that is the fifth word. The fifth word. The fourth word, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? That is captured in Matthew 27 and Mark 15. And then the fifth word, I thirst, is captured in John 19, which we just read. Now a vessel full of sour wine was sitting there and they filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on his sock and put it to his mouth. Now, when Jesus was first placed on the crucifix, before, before the darkness, he was given, he was given uh, vinegar mixed with uh, myrrh. He rejected them because myrrh is a form of painkiller and he did not want the painkiller. He wanted to go the full mile. He wanted to go the full distance of suffering for us. He did not need any of these painkillers. But now, now towards the end, after the darkness, he knew his time was coming to an end. And there were a few things he had to say and he needed to, to, to quench the thirst in his mouth, in his throat in order for him to speak forth. And so he did. And now they offer that sour wine. And, and this, this, all this were prophesied. Right? We can look at, we can look at um, Psalm 42. Verse 1 and 2, Psalm 42, verse 1 and 2. As the deer pants for the water brook, so pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? You know, this, this is the thirst of someone in the desert, in the wilderness. It really, it, thirst can kill you. That's what I'm trying to say. And Jesus was in that state. And then we look at Psalm 69. Um, okay, that's a lot. Um, but 
what I'm saying is the, the vinegar was used, the sour wine. They fill it with a sponge with sour wine and sour means it's not sweet. It means it wasn't a sweet moment for our Lord Jesus Christ even as he went through all this. Okay, let me... 69 69 verse 21 yes this is the verse they also gave me gall for my food and for my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink so it wasn't a sweet moment for him separated from the father bearing the sins of the world and in darkness but he did all this for you and I and they put it on a hyssop. Now, what is a hyssop? A hyssop is a long and slender branch. They used to dip in the. Uh, they 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 put it, uh, put a sponge on it. Yeah, maybe towards the end, and then dip it in the sour wine, and then lift the the this slender branch, a hyssop, towards Jesus for him to take a sip. Now. Let's look at Exodus chapter 12, verse 22. Exodus 12, verse 22. What do we have here? This was on the, uh, the moment before, before the angel of death passed over the doors in Egypt. On, the, on that night, the last night, when the Jews remained in Egypt, in indoors in Egypt uh, before the angel of death came and in order to escape the death of the firstborn in each and every house in Egypt that night they had to kill a lamb and then sprinkle the lamb's blood on the doorpost and also on the lintel you, you know this story very well right in Exodus chapter 12 and what did they use to sprinkle the blood on the doorpost and the lintel verse 22 of Exodus 12 and you shall take a bunch of hyssop, dip it in the blood that is in the basin, and strike the lintel and the two doorposts with the blood that is in the basin, and none of you shall go out of the door of his house until morning. And for the Lord will pass through, the angel of death will pass through and strike the Egyptians, because when they don't see the blood, the angel of death will go in and kill the firstborn of each and every household. So, that, that, lamb who was killed and the blood was used uh, uh, uh the hyssop was used to sprinkle the blood on the lamp post and now we have the true lamb of god the passover lamb and this his his uh and they use the same thing hyssop hyssop to offer him the sponge with this uh, vinegar so where are we verse 20 no verse 30 so when jesus had received the sour wine he said it is finished and you see the exclamation mark it doesn't come from someone who is who has hung on a cross for the last six hours, who had been beaten before that, carried the beam and, and in darkness and in thirst, that person will be quite worn out physically, drained. But Jesus spoke loudly after having his thirst quenched, not by seven up, but by sour wine. But that gave him enough for him to say, it is finished. It was loud, it was redemptive, but it meant one thing. It meant paid in full. It meant that every sin has been forgiven. In, in their language, is telelestai. T-L-L-E, sorry, T-E-L-E-S-T-A-I. T-E-L-E-S-T-A, telestai. In, in, in Hebrew, I'm not sure it's Hebrew or Greek, but telestai means it is finished, paid in full. 
and bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. Who was in control? Jesus was in control. His head did not drop. He still was in control. He had the strength to exclaim, it is finished. And then he bowed his head. He was in control. He was in charge. He voluntarily at 3 p.m. that afternoon gave up his spirit and this spirit was his his own human spirit and he said it is finished he did not say i am finished praise god he didn't say that he said it is finished what is finished the redemptive work of jesus christ for our sake that we our sins can be forgiven and that we can be redeemed and reconciled with the father so the sixth word is here when jesus had received the wine he said it is finished and he bowed his head and handed over the spirit his human spirit so the last three words he focused on himself the first four words he focused on others so we now come to verse 31. Therefore, because it was the preparation day that the body should not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for that Sabbath was a high day. Now, what is the high day? Because following, immediately following the Passover is the feast of the unleavened bread. So that day, that day, this is not any particular Friday but this is the high day yeah when they prepare yes for the Sabbath but this is also the high day because this is also the Passover weekend and with the Passover immediately followed by the unleavened feast of the unleavened bread that is the high day so for that Sabbath was a high day the Jews asked Pilate that their legs might be broken and then they might be taken away why because the 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 jewish law does not allow the body to be hung there overnight it has to be taken down and hanging on uh, hanging on the cross it can take a few days for one to eventually die of speciation you can't breathe anymore yeah breathing will be impossible and it might take a few days in order to hasten this they break the prisoner's legs the criminal's legs so that he now has got no nothing with which to press himself up to breathe because his legs are broken and when he can't press himself up to breathe he will die of asphyxiation suffocation no breath no air so the jews these religious leaders, they were so cruel. They asked Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. It is for their convenience. So we can bring, settle everything, bring the bodies down, bury them, and then we can observe our religious. We are pious people. We will observe the Sabbath and the Passover and then the unleavened bread. Then the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other that was one on Jesus side left and one on Jesus right broke the legs of the first and of the other who was crucified with him but when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead they did not break his legs but one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear and immediately blood and water came out you know what the, the, the soldiers did they did not do what they were told to do instead they did what they were not told to do they were told to break his legs but they did not why because jesus was already dead he had given up his spirit he was in control so they did not break his legs they did not do what they were told to do and then next they went on to do something which they were not told to do but one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear and immediately blood and water came out they were not told to do but they didn't but this 
flowing out of the blood and water tell us one thing. It tells us that this was really truly a human body. That there is blood and there is water that comes out. I, I'm not into medical science. Yeah? But medical science will tell you it is normal when you pierce. Yeah? Uh, blood and water can come out. So that's a real body. But for us, spiritually, it means something. Blood, it is about the justification. The removal of guilt, the removal of sin. Now in the Old Covenant, in the Old Testament, under the law, whatever they did every year with the Passover lamb and, and other sacrifices, that was just to cover the sin. But not Jesus' blood. Jesus' blood is to remove the sin. That is justification, just as you did not sin. And what is water? Water points to sanctification. Because the sin left a stain. So the sanctification is the washing away. So that is the removal of the stain of sin. That is sanctification. So you need to know the word of God and let the word of God wash you clean. So immediately, blood and water came out. And also, also, it is from this, Jesus' death, and then subsequently his resurrection, we see the birth of the bride of Christ. The birth of the church, the bride of Christ. And you know, from Adam's side, from Adam's side, from his ribs, came forth the birth of Eve. So you see the parallel? Out of his side came the birth of the bride. For Adam is Eve, but for Jesus came forth the bride of Christ, the church. And in verse 35, you can see John was there and he records for us. And what did he say? And he who has sinned, has testified. Who has sinned? John, the author of this book. And he who has sinned has testified. He testified in writing. He's saying, and his writing is true. And what is that? That Jesus is the Passover lamb. The true Passover lamb. And he who has sinned has testified. And his testimony is true. And he knows that he is telling the truth so that you may believe, so that you and I may believe. For these things were done that the scriptures that the scriptures should be fulfilled. Not one of his bones shall be broken. They don't need to break his bone because he was already dead. But that it was God's providence again. He made all things happen according to his will. And fulfillment of the scripture that not one of his bones shall be broken and that you can find in Exodus chapter 12 verse 46 Exodus chapter 12 verse 46 yeah or you can also find in uh, Psalms 34 verse 20 Psalm 34 verse 20 you will find this prophesies in Exodus, even in Numbers chapter 9, verse 12. So in Exodus 12, 46, Numbers 9, 12, and Psalm 34, verse 20, not one of his bones shall be broken. It happened as it was prophesied. And again, another scripture says, they shall look on him whom they have pierced. And this is found in Zechariah chapter 12, verse 10. And this I want to show to you. In Zechariah chapter 12 verse 10 and I will pour on the house of David and on the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and supplication and they will look on me whom they pierce and so this is looking forward to the last days and at the end of the great tribulation and Jesus shall come and by then God will pour on the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and supplication and then they will come to realize oh, we did 
have the Messiah with us, but we pierced him. Then they will look on me, Jesus, whom they pierce. And that is what John was saying. They shall look on him whom they pierce. But he did not include the second part of this prophecy. And what is the second part of this prophecy? Yes, they will mourn for him as one mourns for his only son and grieve for him as one grieves for a firstborn. And when will this happen? It will happen in the future when Jesus shall come again. And John, the Apostle John, excluded that because he was not uh, directing us or focusing on Jesus' second coming, but just to tell us that they shall look on him whom they pierce. Full stop. But the mourning for him is going to happen in the future. I just want to alert to you that this, the full fulfillment of verse 10 uh, will take place in the future. But for now, it is only the first part. They look, but they have not mourned, they have not cried. It will come in the future. So now, we come to the burial of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, verse 38. Verse 38. After this, Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus. And Pilate gave him permission. So he came and took the body of Jesus. So who do we have here? We have a secret agent. And not only him. You look at verse 39. And Nicodemus, who at first came to Jesus by night, also came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred pounds. So you, you see there are two secret agents and they were members of the Sanhedrin and the Sanhedrin is like the ruling council hated by the high priest Caipus and this uh, uh, religious leaders and, and wealthy people they together they form the Sanhedrin or having uh, influence and ruling on reigning so to speak yeah, over the Israel people and their life and Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus, they really took a risk. Because by now coming forth, exposing themselves, they, rule, they risk their political positions. They, they risk their, their role in the Sanhedrin. They could be removed from the Sanhedrin because the Sanhedrin, they are anti-Jesus anti-Christ, against Christ. And, and these two now stood up and said, can we have the body? By so doing, they are making known that they are followers of Jesus Christ. But again, I would say this is the providence of God. So sometimes we, we, we grumble and you know, why are some rich people, wealthy people, successful people placed in certain position and they keep mum and they don't do a thing and we are the ordinary people running around doing the, the outreach and the prophesizing, not sorry, not prophesizing and the ministry and propagating of the gospel. And so, but the rich people are not. Those key important people are not. You do not know when God will activate them. They are put there for a purpose. And in this case, Joseph and Nicodemus were there for the burial of our Lord Jesus Christ. So after this, Joseph of Arimathea, because it was Friday and it was coming uh, to the evening and in the evening is the beginning of the new day and that is the Sabbath and, and the, by, by their law, the body cannot remain uh, on the cross he had to be brought down buried then they can start the sabbath and he was bold and after this joseph of arimathea uh, being a disciple of jesus but secretly for fear of the jews 
ask Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus. Another thing that we need to notice is from here on, after Jesus died, no unbeliever touched his body. Joseph did, Nicodemus did, and then the, 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 the rest did. Okay, those who, who came and even Mary grabbed Jesus uh, after he resurrected. But no, no one, even Thomas, I don't know whether Thomas touched, I don't think Thomas touched his, his side. He wanted to touch, but when he saw Jesus, he did not touch. But thing to note is, no unbeliever touched his body after Jesus died. So, the, he asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus and Pilate gave him permission. Pilate, no, Pilate is one guy who do what you want to do, just don't bother me. I, I got enough of all this of your religious squabble. Go in, you know, just settle it. So, you might ask, what, what happened to the apostles? They had all fled, they were hiding. But this is the time, this is the moment God activated Joseph and he came and he took the body of Jesus. And by so doing, he himself became unclean. That means he and also Nicodemus would not be eligible to participate in the Passover meal and even in the unleavened bread feast in the following week. But what does it matter? This is the Passover lamb, the true Passover lamb, Jesus Christ. And they were willing to stand up for Jesus, even in this moment where it seemed that Jesus was a failure. But this two stood up for Christ, even at their own political risk, risking their own political position. So he came and he took the body of Jesus. And Nicodemus, who was, if you remember, in John chapter 3, verse 1 and 2, he was a, a, a chief teacher. He, he knows the word and so on. And he had the revelation. And he became a follower of Jesus Christ. And Nicodemus, who at first came to Jesus at night. He first came to Jesus at night in John chapter 3. But now he is into the light. He is no longer in darkness. He also came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred pounds. Now, all this for the purpose of uh, uh, covering the body with linen. It is unlike the mummies in Egypt, which they are more thorough and, 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 and so on. But this is not. This is just wrapping the body in linens and the myrrh and aloes uh, together, they they are, they I mean they, they make it into like a glue-like mixture. So even as they wrap the body, then at the seams and at the joints, then this uh, glue-like mixture would be placed there to hold the linen in place, because the Jews believe in resurrection. They believe in resurrection, so they have reverence. Or shall I say, they, 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 they respect the, the, the dead body. So they want to wrap it up uh, well, so that at resurrection, you know, all the, the Jewish dead shall be raised. So a Nicodemus, who first came to Jesus at night, also came bringing with him a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 100 pounds. And, you sh and the estimation of the weight of this uh, 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 Myrrh and aloes is about half the body weight, but still a hundred pounds is heavy. A hundred pounds is a lot, and a hundred pounds is expensive. Even if you buy a hundred pounds of all this perfume and, 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 and anointing material today, it will not come cheap. And if it is not cheap today, it wasn't cheap then. Now, all this could not have happened immediately. It it must have been planned ahead by Joseph and Nicodemus. And they knew what Jesus was going through. They knew the word and that he was going to, to, to be crucified and he will die. So they had prepared. It did not happen, especially not on a Friday. If you go to Israel on a Friday, you know, they are on closing down mode, especially on Friday because they are winding down in order to prepare themselves for Sabbath. 
at, at sunset or Friday evening. So things will be winding down. So for them to have prepared all these 100 pounds of myrrh and aloe, they have, have done some planning. So expensive as they were, they did, did, they did it for Jesus. Then they took the body of Jesus and bound it in strips of linen with the spices as the custom of the Jews is to bury. And they were to bury the body on the same day. Uh, honoring the body, respecting the body. But in this case, more than that, they loved Jesus Christ. They did not flee. They came instead to wrap his body and to give him a proper burial. Verse 41. Now, in this place where he was crucified. Now, in this place where he was crucified, where he, uh, there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb, in which no one has yet been laid. So, there they laid Jesus because of the Jews' preparation day, for the tomb was nearby. Now, let me say, their job wasn't very complete because it was kind of a rush. Evening is setting, is coming, and uh, they, 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 need, they need to complete the burial before Sabbath begins. So the, the, the embalming or the wrapping of the linen and the anointing with all the, the stuff, they were not complete. That's why, that's why uh, on the first day in Mark chapter 16, in Mark chapter 16 verse 1, what do we have? In Mark chapter 16, verse 1, when, now when the Sabbath was passed, after the Sabbath, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, yeah, Mary's sister, yeah, Jesus' mother's sister, bought spices that they might come and anoint him. Why? Because it wasn't completed. It was a rush job. But enough to at least settle it for that moment and uh, then move on. So on the day uh, which is past Sabbath, they came uh, and they came with the spices in order to complete the burial. So you, you can read, you can read the same uh, even in Luke chapter 24 verse 1. Luke 24 verse 1 about the ladies who came uh, past Sabbath in order to complete the spices. I mean, to complete the burial with the spices that they had bought. Now, let's go back to the place where Jesus was buried. And this is the garden tomb. Now, if you go to Israel, you will know that uh, slightly, uh, just a short distance, just a short distance from where the place of the skull, Golgotha, is, uh, you, you come down, it's on the left side, uh, you will find this garden tomb. Of course, we have no certainty. Be until today, scholars are quite divided whether the, our Lord Jesus was buried here or he was buried at the church of the sepulchre. Uh, uh, but likely, I, I'm inclined to believe that it is here, but doesn't matter. Yeah. But this, this garden tomb, as you see, uh, even with the, the, the stone on the side, this was not far from the place of the skull. And it's only logical because it, it was getting dark sun was setting and they have to do it very uh, hastily so uh, brought the body and it has to be a short distance and the short distance from the place of the skull to here is is really uh, doable uh, because it is just a, a few minutes and you can be here and they place the body and then that's where they they did the the wrapping with the linens and the, with the spices as well and then they covered the tomb so verse 
41. Now in the same place. Verse 41. Now in the same place. Now in the place, I mean, in the nearby place where he was crucified, there was a garden, which I just showed you on the slide. And in the garden, a new tomb. Perhaps Joseph had bought it for himself, for his family, but it was not used. The Bible says it is a new tomb in which no one had yet been laid. Now, if it is a new tomb, then it is easy to prove it is when they went in and they couldn't find the body, they knew it was an empty, the tomb was empty. Uh, the, 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 our Lord Jesus had been raised from the dead because there's no one else. But if it is a tomb that had been used and so many other bones are around, then how do you know which is which? But it was as prophesied and we look, we look at uh, Isaiah chapter 3, 59. Isaiah 53, Isaiah 53 verse 9, sorry. Isaiah 53 verse 9. And they made his grave with the wicked. Yeah, he died with a thief on his left and a thief on his right. But with the rich at his death. So after he died, they buried him with the rich. And this was whose tomb? Joseph's tomb. And Joseph was a rich man. Let me tell you, the, 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 the spices and the linens and all did not come cheap. And he could afford and how many people can buy his own tomb? The rich, right? So Joseph could. And this was a rich man's tomb. And it was meant for him and his, probably his family. But he gave it to Jesus. And they made his grave with the wicked on the cross. One on the left, one on the right. But with the rich at his death. Because he had done no violence, nor was there any deceit in his mouth. So this was fulfilled, even as Jesus was buried in this tomb. Verse 42. Verse 42. So, when they had laid Jesus because of the Jews' preparation day, for the tomb was nearby. Again, emphasis is there. For the tomb was nearby. Uh, between the place of the skull and somewhere else could be further. But, you know, place of the skull and the church of the sepulchre is quite far. But here, between the place of the skull Golgotha and this tomb uh, it is quite near for the tomb was nearby and why as I mentioned because Sabbath was about to begin and um, they need to complete the burial before then now so Sabbath since we're talking about Sabbath so Sabbath is about to begin so Sabbath means uh, rest right rest after a uh, uh, of uh, six days of work on the seventh day rest for Jesus yes he, they place him in a tomb before Sabbath so that after all his work and ministry now Jesus will rest and that's why when he went back to the father he went to take the right side of the father and he sat down if you remember in the tabernacle, in the outer court, in the inner court where the priests perform their function, there are no chairs. They are always on their feet because the work is not done. So they are always on their feet. But Jesus, when he had completed his work, he said he is finished, he died, and subsequently he was raised, then he was assigned. Then he ascended back to the Father and he sat down at the right hand of the Father. By sitting down, it meant he was resting, he has completed. But even though he, has, he is resting, he is interceding for you and I all the time. 
okay so we will come back next week and then we will look at chapter 20 the empty tomb and what a glorious day it will be because that that points to us that is the confirmation of Elpis, the blessed hope. And great is the lesson this morning. Great for the truth that uh, is before us. Great for all that Christ had done for us. And Father, we just want to thank you. We thank you for your grace and for your mercy that you would put in place this redemptive plan and you thought about us even through our Lord Jesus on the cross and on the cross where the family of Christ gather where there is forgiveness and it is at the cross that all these things came to a climax that all the all that Jesus had spoken and all that he had done and we have seen even men at his worst but you God at your best and we are the true beneficiaries of your grace your abundant grace it is so amazing so thank you Father even as we take a break here we look forward to coming back next week when we shall say he is risen. He is not here. Praise be to your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.